Thank you, Owen. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so you probably noticed there's a nice, beautiful, sunshiny day out there. Very thankful for that. But typically we know this time of year is dark, gloomy, and cold. And in just 12 days we're going to be entering the summer, excuse me, the winter solstice. Not the summer solstice. Of course my haircut probably looks like it's getting ready for summer. So, but I bet a lot of you are looking forward to the spring holy days coming up in April. I know I am. I really hate this time of year when the sun goes down at 5 p.m. I despise <laughs> coming home and I feel like it's time to go to bed. So I yesterday just moved my office from where I was at at work to into a new office and uh, unpacking things and I grabbed my calendar for 2024 and hung it up on the wall and started marking off all the holy days and calculating all the vacation days I'm going to need to get off for the holy days coming up, getting excited about that. It's coming around the corner. Of course, we have to go through winter first. Um, I like all the seasons, but I just don't like winter quite as much as the rest because it gets cold and such. But every season has its good points. They all are beautiful in their way. I mean, it's very pretty in the wintertime with all the snow and such. If we get it here, I'm not a fan of ice storms and things, but hopefully we can avoid that this winter. But just like all the seasons of the year, we have the seasons of our life as well. There's the ups and downs, good and bad. And we may wonder at times, why is this happening to me? Why me? Why am I going through this typical thing, this, this trial or whatever it may be? And as you notice today as we were going through the prayer request, the list of prayer requests uh, for people is getting longer and there's a lot of people that are suffering and going through quite a bit right now. And just over the past year, we've lost quite a few loved ones and close family friends in the church. There's had quite a few deaths in the past year or so. It's impacted all of us. So yesterday at work, I'm talking about changing my office around and such, and I have a window that's there on the side. And um, one of my coworkers, his name's Pete Davis, and he works over on the laser machine near me. And uh, his wife's name is Amanda Davis. She's on our prayer request list as well. And she's been on and off since August. Um, you may recall that she it was on a ventilator for a while because she fell. She was sleepwalking. She had taken her daughter up to Oklahoma City to get special care uh, because she had a special needs daughter. And she was sleepwalking, fell, hit her head, and was in good health before this. Um, she was on a ventilator for some time. She's off the ventilator now, uh, but home on a trach. She has a trach tube that she has to have on. And so anyway, I went over to Pete, and I was like, hey, Pete, how's it going? Because I know that he's been through so much with this whole situation. And I just went and talked to him a bit, and I said, How, how's, how's things going? And he's like, I'm not well. Um, I didn't sleep at all last night. He says I had to call an ambulance to come and get her again. Uh, because she had trouble breathing, her trach tube clogged up. I guess it can get clogged, and so he had to call EMSA. They had to come and help her. So he's just having a rough time with all this stuff. And, um, you know, he and his family have been through quite a bit, and I was just talking with him about the situation. And uh, beyond that, also his daughter, she's 12 years old, the one that's special needs. Um, she's about six years old, a grill barbecue grill fell on her and she w wasn't breathing and so now she's um, pretty much um, comatose so she has to have special care uh, basically 24-hour uh, care assistance but in spite of all this that Pete's going through and you know I just said hey Pete I'm so sorry what's going on is there anything we can do to help you and he's like no I think I've got everything pretty well covered but um, I said well, you're on our church prayer list we're praying for you We'll continue to pray for you, and he was very much appreciative of that. But, you know, in spite of all this, he shows up to work every single day, he has a great attitude about what's going on. Uh, he did share with me he's looking forward to January because his health benefits will renew, and he can get more help for his wife because he's had trouble getting people to come in to help her, just with, uh, I guess, there's shortages with uh, people 
nurses being able to come and help at their house and such. And his daughter's still in Oklahoma City. He would love to have her back home, uh, but just can't do it with just all the stuff going on. So I just wanted to share that with you and um, told him we're praying for him. He really appreciates it. And, you know, I was thinking, I don't know why Pete's family is going through all this. Um, we don't know what God's plan of purpose is for all of us. You know, we do have our trials and things that we go through. Uh, so let's go to Isaiah 55, verses 8 through 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. We may not like it, but God knows what's best for us. When the heat gets turned up, you may be thinking God is not with you, but you can rest assured he is there. Even when the heat's getting turned up and things are going bad, he's there. His eyes are on us at all times, and he's making sure that it's not too much for us. You know, we might think at times that um, God isn't with us, but he has mercy and he knows our limits. So I know Pete's going through a lot of stuff right now, but he knows what our limits are. And he's there watching us, making sure that we can handle what we're getting. And not that it's like that he's being condemned or anything, it's just that there's trials and things that happen within our life, and God knows what's best for us, and we just need to have the faith in him. So I want to talk to you about the men's group. We all went and did metal forging, and it was a lot of fun. Um, we had different projects we could make, and we would put it, they had the heat source there where you'd put the metal in, and we were striking it and making different things, and I decided to make a leaf, and the leaf was very thin, and you had to be very careful because if you kept it in there too long with a fire, it would just melt away. So you had to really watch it to make sure that it didn't melt off completely. And I think of God is like watching us as well, making sure you know, he, okay, that's too much for him. He knows what's going on, so he's watching. Just like keeping an eye on us with the way we're doing this foraging, he makes sure that we're not going to have to go through too much, that he can really help. So now let's go to 1 Peter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes through it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you, who have not seen you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full glory, received the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So we must have faith in God. He loves us. And what a wonderful inheritance we have. We have a lot in this life to go through, but just like a blacksmith working on his projects, God with us, he's watching us, and we just have to have total faith in him that he knows what's best for us and he knows what he is doing as we may go through these trials in our life that he's preparing us for something that's coming up or just preparing us for being in his kingdom. Just taking off those sharp edges. and Just like the potter on his will, he's working with us and molding us and helping us. And Kim told me something that was pretty cool. Uh, even with the potter as they're doing the potter's uh, making a pot, sometimes a piece of clay or the pot will break and they'll actually take a piece of the broken pot and they'll put that into the new pot and it, it strengthens the new pot, makes it even better. And it has a prettier glaze. So he takes our brokenness and he makes it better. 
He helps us and strengthens us in so many ways. So sometimes we have to go through a lot to make us stronger. And we don't know exactly what's going on at the time, but God knows. So now I'd like to take us to um, James 1, verses 2 through 8. And it's entitled, Profiting from Trials. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If, you, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives all liberally and without reproach, and he will give, it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You know, trials can be very hard, but knowing that God is in it with us is very reassuring, and it strengthens our faith in him. We need to ask for faith and wisdom to help us have patience and a better understanding of how God is working through us. Speaking of, some, speaking of some of the trials we have that God can help us with, Satan will try anything he can to harm and hurt us. So we need to ask God to show hidden hurts and lies from the enemy. I have learned from this soul care training that I've been taking, uh, Matt and Renee have been going through it, Kim and I, and um, also Brittany and Chrissy and Trevor, we've been learning some new things. And uh, one of the things I've learned is that we all have woundings from our childhood. And that we may not even know we have that we're still dealing with. It could be a conscious memory of some terrible thing that happened um, when we were a kid. Or it could even be something subconscious that we're totally unaware of that is still affecting us. So let's turn now to Psalms 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. And you're acquainted with all my ways, for there is not a word on my tongue. But behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. And I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both like to you, alike to you. For you have formed my inward parts, and you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame is not hidden from you. When I was made a secret, in secret, and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they were written the days fashioned for me. And as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts of me, O God, and how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more numbers than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you, and that you would slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, you bloodthirsty men, for they speak against you wickedly. Your enemies take your name in vain. I do not hate them, O God. You hate who hate you. And I do not loathe those who rise up against you. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them as my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And yes, and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. What a beautiful chapter that is. It totally encapsulates God's 
love for us and how much he wants to help us and be with us. He carefully and created us in our mother's womb. He knows every hair on our head from the top of the head to the bottom of our feet. He knows everything about us and he knows what we can take and what we can't. And he just wants us so very much to be like him that he's going to do whatever it takes to get us where we need to be. So ask God to help and show you if there's any areas that need healing. You may have broken places within you that you don't know about. So ask God to help you to see those areas where you need help for your broken. I mean, there's the obvious things going on, but there might be something that you don't see that he could help you with. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows exactly what we're going through. So in conclusion, I'm going to read some lyrics from a song from the artist Jeremy Camp. And the song is entitled, He Knows. All the bitter, weary ways, endless driving day by day, you barely have the strength to pray in the valley low. And how hard your fight has been, how deep the pain within, wounds that no one else can see, hurts too much to show. All the doubt you're standing in between, and all the weight that brings you to your knees, he knows. He knows. Every hurt and every sting. He has walked the suffering. He knows. He knows. Let your burdens come undone. Let your eyes up to the one who knows. He knows. We may faint. We may sink. Feel the pain and near the brink. But the dark begins to shrink. When you find the one who knows. The chains of doubt that held you between. One by one they're starting to break free. He knows, he knows. Every hurt, every sting, he has walked the suffering. He knows, he knows. Let your burdens come undone. Lift your eyes up to the one who knows. He knows. Every time you feel forsaken, every time you feel alone, he's near the brokenhearted, every tear. He knows, he knows. Every hurt, every sting, he has walked the suffering. He knows. Let your burdens come undone. Lift your eyes up to the one. Who knows? He knows.